Imagine if one tiny injection could silence the obsessive food cravings that haunt millions. What if the same medication used to treat diabetes and obesity could actually rewire your brain and cure food addiction? Sound too good to be true? Welcome to the wild world of GLP-1 drugs, where weight loss is just the beginning and food addiction might be the next frontier. But are we actually treating the root problem or just numbing the symptoms? In this video, we're diving deep into the science, stories and controversies around using GLP-1s like Ozempic, Wegovy and Manjaro to fight food addiction. What do the studies say? What are people experiencing? And are we ready for a future where our brains are chemically rewired to resist temptation? What is food addiction, really? Let's start with the uncomfortable truth. Food addiction is real. And no, it's not just a matter of willpower. Food addiction mimics the same reward and reinforcement loops as drug and alcohol addiction. Sugar, salt, fat, they hit the brain like cocaine. That dopamine rush, it's addictive. You're not just eating chips, you're chasing a high. The Yale Food Addiction Scale, YFAS, one of the most respected tools in this field, shows that up to 20% of people meet the criteria for food addiction. Among those with obesity, that number climbs even higher. Common symptoms include loss of control over eating persistent cravings despite consequences, withdrawal-like symptoms when cutting back continued use despite emotional, physical or social harm. Sound familiar? It's the same language used in substance abuse diagnostics. And guess what? The brain scans of food addicts show similar patterns of activity to those addicted to drugs. The nucleus accumbens, prefrontal cortex, and reward pathways all light up like a Christmas tree. So why hasn't this been treated more seriously until now? How GLP-1 drugs work, the neuroscience. Enter GLP-1 drugs. These aren't just weight loss hacks. They're chemical messengers that tell your body and brain something powerful. You're full, you're satisfied, you don't need that next bite. GLP-1 stands for glucagon-like peptide 1. It's a hormone your body naturally produces after eating. It slows gastric emptying, lowers blood sugar and boosts insulin. But the magic happens in the brain. These drugs cross the blood-brain barrier and directly influence areas like the hypothalamus, regulates hunger, the amygdala, emotions and behaviour, the prefrontal cortex, impulse control and decision-making, and most importantly, they blunt the brain's dopamine reward response to food. That means people on GLP-1 drugs often say, I'm just not thinking about food. Cravings are gone. I can walk past a bakery and feel nothing. These are qualitative, emotional, behavioural changes, not just weight loss. It's not willpower, it's neurochemistry. The shocking case studies. Want real-world proof? Let's look at some jaw-dropping case studies. Case number one, the ex-binge eater. A 38-year-old woman diagnosed with binge eating disorder reported daily episodes of out-of-control eating. After starting semaglutide, she said she no longer even thought about food between meals and binges dropped from five times a week to zero in just one month. Case number two, the sugar addict, a man with type 2 diabetes used to consume four cans of soda per day and couldn't resist candy. After GLP-1 therapy, soda now tastes too sweet and cravings are totally gone. Case number three, the emotional eater. A 42-year-old woman who struggled with childhood trauma found comfort in late-night snacking. After six weeks on terzepatide, she reported she no longer turned to food when sad and started therapy to process her emotions more directly. These aren't just anecdotes, they're life transformations, and they all point to the same underlying mechanism. Food isn't a coping tool anymore when your brain chemistry changes. Clinical research, what do the studies say? OK, let's talk data. What does science actually say? Study number one, GLP-1 and Craving Reduction, 2022 JAMA Psychiatry. 
This study found that semaglutide reduced neural reactivity in the brain's reward center when participants were shown images of high-calorie food. Translation, the brain didn't get as excited. Study number two, binge eating disorder and GLP-1s, University of Copenhagen. In a randomized controlled trial, patients with binge eating disorder reported fewer episodes per week increased impulse control, lower scores on the Yale Food Addiction Scale. Study number three, dopamine pathway regulation, Nature Neuroscience 2021. This study showed that GLP-1 receptor activation alters dopamine transmission, blunting the reward associated with food stimuli. So, yes, this is hardcore neuroscience, not wishful thinking. But wait, is this a cure or just a crutch? Let's get real for a second. Are GLP-1s treating food addiction or just masking it? Critics argue, you're not fixing the root cause, just sedating the symptoms. Once off the drug, cravings return. Emotional trauma, learned habits and psychological dependence are still there. It's like giving methadone to a heroin addict. It helps, but it doesn't always heal. Others argue the opposite. If food addiction is biological, shouldn't the treatment be biological too? Think about antidepressants. They don't erase your trauma, but they help you process it. Same with GLP ones. They quiet the food noise so you can work on the real issues underneath. The hopeful future. What's next? Despite the challenges, the future is bright. Newer medications like Cagrisamar and Ritatrutide may be even more effective at treating addiction by targeting multiple receptors beyond GLP-1, including GIP and glucagon. Some trials are now focused specifically on food addiction, not just obesity or diabetes. We may see FDA approvals for binge eating disorder treatment, GLP ones used in eating disorder recovery programs, personalized dosing based on genetic addiction risk. Imagine a world where a teen struggling with emotional eating could start a holistic program, GLP ones, therapy and education, before spiraling into a lifelong cycle of shame. That's the real potential here, but they're not a magic bullet. Food addiction is still rooted in emotion, trauma and behaviour. GLP ones can turn down the volume, but the healing still takes work. The future of food addiction treatment might not be a battle of willpower, but a question of chemistry, compassion and comprehensive care. So next time someone says, just eat less, you'll know there's a whole lot more going on beneath the surface. If this video opened your eyes, hit that like button and subscribe for more deep dives into the intersection of medicine, mindset and modern health.